So bright and early start uh, up at Phil's place and we're going to get a chance to fit the oak beam and then possibly even do some tiling below it. boiler below here, I think it's like a back boiler gas uh, fire, and as um, Phil's mentioned, I've done like a tour video and I'll probably release that after this, but there used to be the fire down there and the lintel that came across was about this height, so they've actually moved the lintel up and then all this is kind of maybe 300, 400 mil of stud work there. So we've got something to fix into and we've got brick pillars either side, so I really want to keep the oak really flat against the wall. So uh, that's what we're going to do. So we've got the front face, which is quite simple because that's just going to overlap the sides and a certain amount of the top there. Um, but then the section which I've built onto that, which will go in under to give the impression that it's a deeper beam, needs to sit under here. Um, but also it's not going to be flush against here. They want to drop it down a little bit. So I need to put a timber batten on here and then we'll fix into that and hopefully hide the screws in from behind. And then as precise as I was, the cheeks of this are just about a mil or two over. So we just need to take a slither off that so that it'll slide in nice and snug. into the brickwork to hold the oak really flat and straight but then I want to use two kind of cut two dowels or plugs to act as almost like a feature so if I measure those out drill those and then we can hopefully cut some plugs So that's our holes done, I think. Uh, we've got 12 mil holes drilled, which is where our dowels are gonna go in. We're gonna use a plug cutter to do those. And then where the uh, clearance hole is, the bottom corners are gonna use some concrete bolts that'll be going into the brickwork. So the clearance hole is kind of eight mil there. And then these will be going into the wooden lintel. So there's a four mil screw hole uh, clearance there. We just need to pair off a little bit of this because the plaster work is leaving this proud. So I'm gonna cut in here and then just see if we can use some chisels.
who've pulled it in pretty tight. They're going into the wooden studwork that's in here. The two lower corners are going to go into the brickwork, so they're drilled. I'm going to use these 100 mil Thunderbolt type uh, or concrete screws. So hopefully that's just going to pull it up a little bit more snug to the wall. Well, we're in. The only thing I'd like to do is just see if I can do a hammer and fix it or something different this end because I think that concrete screw, which is just these little eight mil ones, it's just, all it's gone into is the mortar and it's lime mortar here, so it's just not biting. It's, it's not going to go anywhere, but it would just pull it in a little bit tighter. What I might do is just rub a little bit of that wax on the pine strip, just to seal that as well from any steam. Um, but you're not going to be able to see it under the back there anyway. So we've got the beam in, still want to do the plugs, but I've still got about two hours of my visit here, so I think we can probably get some of this tiled, if not all of it, and then Phil can ground it when he gets back from work. So the plan is to bring it down to just below the top of the oven at the side, but because this is bent at the back, you can still see the wall through there, so we're going to go two quarters lower at, below, you know, at the back of it completely. Um, so I've marked on the wall two thirds of the tile up from the oven, so we scribed the last tile onto it, and then we'll just batten out now, um, and we'll start from there, and then come back in and do the bottom at the end. as far as I can get, run out of tile spaces. So Dad's gone to get some more. Uh, I'm up to a good point, I'm kind of pinching them from the bottom because it's going off quite quickly anyway. And then I'm probably, I've only got an hour left, so I'll probably get the back part done and then they can continue with the sides because they've got to put a bead here anyway at the front. Uh, and then I can get on quickly before I leave and put those oak plugs in, the beam at the top, and then uh, the job done for us, or for me at least. Scrape the excess off because then I can have lunch without worrying about it going off. I spent most of my time picking all this wax stuff off. Usually it's in a couple of blobs just to stop them scratching, but this is like pasted on there. While I'm waiting for the tile spaces from the shop and for Dad to pick up the lunch, I'll cut and plug these. These are 12 mil holes, drilled with the force in a bit. And then I've got, um, whatever these are, 12.7 millimeter plug cutters, just screw fix ones. Hopefully they're gonna cut through this oak and then we can get them in, see what they look like. So I'm just having a look at this. I mean, this is cutting through really well already. Um, I've cut them on the end grain like you would if you were using traditional dowels, uh, like you would on a timber frame house. So I'm gonna try a few like that They'll obviously, when they're waxed, they'll be darker, so they'll be more of a feature. And then I'll cut a couple in the face grain as well, so we can compare and see what they look like. They're razor sharp. If you haven't come across one of these before, this is a cutter which enables you to cut the middle. You're basically cutting a hole without destroying the centre part like a normal drill bit. So it cuts out this plug and then we'll just snap that off inside there and then we'll be able to use those to plug our holes. So those have been cut with a plug cutter and then a rip through there with a miter saw and there are our plugs.
one more thing I'm doing is just protecting the edge with some masking tape because when I use a saw I don't want to dig into the finish because I'm not going to hold sat metal thing again. Well that's done by using a couple of strips of tape. It's just put my saw blades that far off the oak. So that we've basically got the depth of two bits of tape to sand off. So that's it, dowels are in, it's all finished and sanded. I haven't over kind of buffed it because they were quite keen to have a quite a flat matte sort of finish. Um, so I've left it kind of just, just luster. So the tiling's actually gonna come up on the inside of here. So that tiny join there will be completely hidden. We've got it nice and tight to the plaster by scribing the back of it slightly. And if needs be, over the next few months, if it does move at all, they could just run a tiny bit of cork there, but hopefully it won't be needed. So I've run out of time to get the tiling done, but the oak beam is in, the dowels work really well, the pegs at the end, and the whole thing is perfectly solid against that wall. So it came out okay, I think, and I don't think that seam underneath is that visible at all now. So hopefully it's a believable beam. But I think that's it, so remember, if you can, do it yourself, and we'll see you next time.